Hey guys, how's it going? One of the most common complaints about Daisy that I've heard over the past few days is regarding performance issues, and there's been a lot of possible fixes that have been circulating lately. In this video, I'll be compiling some of the most common fixes I've seen, and hopefully a few of them will help boost your frame rate a bit. First off, it's important to understand why Daisy can bring even the most powerful gaming computers to their knees. Daisy is based on the Arma 2 Take On Helicopters engine, which, like most Arma engines, does not utilize your computer's hardware to its fullest capabilities under default settings. For example, a lot of the game's graphical rendering is shifted onto your computer's processor as opposed to your computer's graphics card. There's also a lot of flaws with the engine's hidden surface determination, which is a process all three-dimensional video games use to render nearby surfaces that the player cannot see. This is why your frame rate usually drops in big cities, such as Cherno or Electro. It's because the game does a poor job of hiding all of the rooms behind the walls of buildings. There are a few ways we can force the game to utilize our computer's hardware, but the only way to fix the engine's problem with hidden surface determination is through patience. Daisy is still in alpha, it's still being changed and optimized, and it'll get better. Probably. The first most obvious fix is to change your in-game video settings through the options menu. Since everybody has a completely different hardware configuration from mine, I don't suggest you copy my settings directly. Instead, I recommend using free software such as Fraps, DxStory, or MSI Afterburner to monitor your frame rate as you change each of your settings on a low population server. While changing your settings, try to face towards a cluster of buildings if possible instead of towards the coast or a forest or something. This lets you see what kind of frame rate you'd be getting while the engine renders hidden surfaces like I mentioned earlier. Since I can't tell you exactly what to change for the most optimal frame rate, I'll tell you what each option changes so that you can find a balance between a good frame rate and a good looking DayZ. Starting with the main video menu, the first option you'll want to look at is the rendering resolution. This is not the resolution of the game window itself, but the resolution at which the game renders, hence the name. I recommend setting it to 100% initially, and only reducing it if your frame rate refuses to stay above 30 even after you've tried every possible fix. A lower rendering resolution can drastically improve your frame rate, but everything will appear much blurrier, which can be a huge problem if you're trying to tell the difference between a zombie or a player in the distance. The second option you'll want to look at is your vertical sync, or V-Sync. The purpose of vertical synchronization is to prevent visual tearing at extremely high frame rates. V-Sync does this by setting a maximum frame rate, which is usually the refresh rate of your monitor. Disabling it may or may not increase your frame rate, depending on your computer, so I recommend testing it. Under the User Interface submenu, the only two interesting options are your resolution and aspect ratio. The resolution is essentially the size of the game window, and the aspect ratio just defines the ratio between the height and width of the game window. I recommend setting this option to the native resolution of your monitor, as doing so will give you the best picture and won't impact your frame rate a large amount. Under the Quality submenu, you have four options to change. Objects, Terrain, Clouds, and Shadows. The Objects option changes the quality and complexity of objects in the game, such as items and buildings. The Terrain option changes the frequency and quality of terrain-related objects, such as grass, bushes, and trees. The Clouds option changes the quality of the clouds, and the Shadows option changes the quality of the shadows. Experiment between these options to see which ones affect your frame rate the most. Under the Texture submenu is a very important setting, called Video Memory. This option defines how much memory on your graphics card is available for the game to use. I recommend giving the game as much memory as possible, so it's important for you to know exactly how much memory your graphics card has. A quick Google search of your graphics card's name should tell you how much visual memory it has. If you still aren't sure, just set the option to Auto. The Texture Detail setting modifies the physical texture of objects in the game, such as buildings and grass while texture filtering modifies the detail of objects that are in the distance, like the trees on the hill in this screenshot. It's best for you to experiment to see how much each option affects your frame rate, as results vary between hardware configurations. Finally, the rendering submenu contains a lot of processing and post-processing options that can be drastically affecting your frame rate. Anti-aliasing softens the edges of pixelated objects so that they look smoother. I recommend disabling it. Alpha to coverage affects how grass, bushes, and other foliage are rendered. I recommend disabling it as well. Edge smoothing is a less in-depth version of anti-aliasing, so I recommend disabling it. HDR quality affects the quality of lighting effects and can also affect frame rates in some cases, so I recommend leaving it at very low. Ambient occlusion affects ambient lighting. I have it disabled for my personal preference. Post-process of the quality 
as the name suggests, affects the quality of post-processing effects like motion blur, certain lighting effects, and bloom. I recommend leaving it disabled. The bloom and rotation blur sliders are cosmetic and they don't seem to affect frame rate very much, so adjust those to your own personal preference. Now that your in-game settings have been tweaked, let's dig a bit deeper and modify Daisy's configuration files. These changes are completely legal, so don't worry about getting banned for hacking or anything like that. In Windows Explorer, navigate to your My Documents directory and find the Daisy folder. Inside this folder will be a file called daisy.cfg. Right-click this file and open it in Notepad. Inside will be a bunch of settings, but the one we're looking for is called GPU underscore max frames ahead. By default, it's usually set to 1000, but we're going to set it to 1. Save the file, close it, and then go back to Windows Explorer and right-click on the file. Select Properties and mark the checkbox called Read Only. This will prevent the game itself from modifying this file, as normally it would just reset the setting that we just changed back to its original value. It's important to note that certain graphics settings, such as your resolution and rendering options, will not change while this file is set to read only. So if you buy a new monitor or something and need to change Daisy's resolution, make sure it isn't set to read only or else the resolution won't change. Next, navigate back to your My Documents directory and find the folder called Daisy Other Profiles. Open the folder, and then open the folder inside of it that should contain your Steam name, then open the file that doesn't have the term VARS in it by right-clicking and opening it with Notepad. This file has a lot more information than the previous one, but the settings you need to change should be closer to the bottom of the file. Search for the setting called Scene Complexity. This setting, as well as the three settings below it, affect how objects are rendered from a distance. Change Scene Complexity to 50,000, Shadow Z Distance to 100, View Distance to 2,200, and Preferred Object View Distance to 1,800. Save the file and close it. There's no need to set the file to read only the same way you did with the previous file. At this point, try playing a few minutes of Daisy. You should notice that your frame rate is much higher and more stable than it was before. If you're still having trouble, this means that your performance issues lie outside of the game itself. Outdated video drivers are a common cause of low frame rates, so make sure you keep your video drivers up to date. Click on your graphic card manufacturer of choice below to go to their website and check for driver updates. It's also important to perform regular maintenance of your computer through defragmentation, antivirus scans, and so on. Using a program such as Razer Game Booster to optimize your computer can also help increase your frame rate. Make sure to close any other open applications while you're playing DayZ to ensure that the game is getting every possible ounce of performance out of your computer. Another possible solution lies in unparking your processor's cores, especially if you have a hyper-threaded Intel processor. When a processor core is parked, that means that the operating system has temporarily disabled that core from running in an attempt to save power. It's friendly to the environment, but harmful to your frame rate. Luckily, there's a utility that unparks your cores, keeping them active at all times so that CPU-intensive games like DayZ can take advantage of them. I've linked this utility in the description. Give it a try, and hopefully it'll help. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe for more DayZ content, and please follow me on Twitter at Nailstump.